Hey Taurus, how y'all doing? Welcome. We're going to be doing your January monthly reading here. Before I get into your meditation, just a couple of announcements. Uh, firstly, I have now opened availability for personal readings. All of that is over on my website. I will say I, I just have a limited availability at the moment spanning a very short time frame. Um, so all of that again is over on my website and I'm excited to connect with you guys uh, individually. Also, I have open registration for my Be Your Own Intuitive course, my second round, I'm really excited about it. All of that is also over on my website, which is listed in the description box below. All right, let's get right into the meditation. And listen, I, I saw images from a film, it doesn't matter if you've seen it or not. I saw images from a film called White Oleander. A White Oleander uh, starring Michelle Pfeiffer. I saw images of an actual, there, there, there's a specific scene in that film uh, where there is an image of a white oleander flower being dropped into or placed into a glass of milk. And I'm really drawn to that specific imagery. Then I saw a skyline of Los Angeles, which is also where that movie is set. A lot of the imagery that I got around this and what the heart of that film is about, it's about perspective. It's also about mother-daughter relationships. It's also about um, the relationship that we have with ourselves and how it is or is not informed by our relationship with our parents, how we grew up, how we see the world, um, how we see ourselves within and through our children, generational lines. I'm also really drawn, it's very like empress energy as well, but it feels very much like there's this energy of a clean slate, okay? Like a fool's energy, but a little more mature Ooh, in a way, right? It's like a fool who's learned some things. But it feels like, because I'm seeing this blank sheet, this beautiful blank sheet of paper. And there's this feeling of there might be some people, places, things, even your own perspective that is, I don't want to say wiped clean, but I want to say... Marie Kondoed, <laughs> yes, that's a Marie Kondoed as a verb, meaning anything that is is clutter, right? Whether it's an energetic clutter, mental clutter, a perspective that could use a flip maru, right? To see something differently, whatever this is, it could even be relationships around you, where you live, how you live, anything that is cluttering, right? The path for you to, to go where you want to go and manifest what you want to manifest, it's coming up for review in January, okay? Now, how you respond and not react to these aspects coming up for review will directly influence the experience, right? It's about responding, not reacting. And you can also look at it from the perspective of if there's clutter in your path that doesn't need to be there, and it wants to come up for review and you're being given the choice, right? To go this days, this goes, or a little more of this and a little less of this. Isn't that actually a beautiful thing? Isn't that an experience that we can go, okay, it might be a bit uncomfortable. It might involve some uncomfortable conversations. It might involve some, you know, shadow work with myself or mirror work with myself or looking back on the past and going, hmm, you know what? I, I wanna do things differently moving forward because I want my future to look different in some way, shape or form. Right? So that's the energy going into January. Uh, let's go ahead and see what your, what your animal is. Let's do this, Taurus. But it feels like there's just a lot of potential, right? Yep, okay then. Okay, this is actually, I'm gonna take both of these. This is, this is, this is a bit cheeky, <laughs> and I like it. This is really, okay. So you have the panther here. So the panther equates to the tower in the tarot, and you're gonna see how this is very cheeky and in a really fun way. So the tower is what happens when there are people, places, and or things in our path that need to be removed so that we can get where we ultimately believe is our highest and best place, right? This is exactly what I said in the meditation, or what I was getting in the meditation, rather. But what's funny about this, not like funny ha-ha, but funny like, hmm, I see you, is that, remember when I said that the experiences around these items coming up for review, how, what that looks like, how that feels, how easily you move through this time, right? Or, or maybe it doesn't have to be easy, but it, it can at least be from a place of allowance, right? Is going to be based on whether you respond 
as opposed to react. And look at this panther in a place of reaction, right? Remember when I said there might be some discomfort, uncomfortable conversations or shadow work or aspects of yourself that are coming up for review. But again, this is all in accordance with, with it. it's like you, you've placed an order, right? You've placed an order. Maybe it's a new year's resolution. Maybe it's, you know, coming from that perspective and you're going, you know, I want to move, you know, homes and I want this to be my new reality. I want a job that pays more, that fulfills me. That's more of a career and less of a job. I want to manifest someone, manifest someone, manifest, what is that? Manifest someone with whom I can spend my life happily and have whatever that is for you. And so the universe says, okay, we got your order. Here's what's keeping you from what you want. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And you're going, whoa, 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 hold on now. I didn't ask for all that. I asked for what I wanted. And then the universe is going, well, fine, but but in order for us to, I'm trying to give you what you want, but I just saw 555 on the timer, number of change. In order to give you what you want, we got to remove this excrement that's keeping you from it. Some of this could be feelings of, of self-worth that need to come up for examining, right? Do you feel like you are worthy of what you want? Well, yeah, are you sure? Look at that again. <laughs> Reconsider right? Or is the relationship that you're already in, right? You're, you're asking for that to, to go somewhere and graduate to the next level, but let's look at how it's serving you and, and you know, could there be something uh, out there that is a, a vibrational match to where you want to be as opposed to where you are, right? This is going to be a lot of different things, but this is tower energy. And then we also have the rabbit here, which is really interesting too, because by the way, this is just really lovely, Taurus. I have to, I, it feels like you're very supported by spirit, your higher self, signs and synchronies from the synchronicities from the universe during all this as well. I do feel like there is this underlying feeling that you're never going to quite lose or that is uh, accessible to you, right? Of, okay, that there, there might be some discomfort. There's going to be some change. There's going to be some things that need to come up for review, but I do feel supported. And like, I just have this deep seated feeling that I'm exactly where I meant to be, which is beautiful. So the rabbit equates to the nine of swords right? Which is about nightmares or, or lack of sleep or your subconscious side playing out what needs to be addressed in your dream state, right? Because that's when we're at our, 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 you know, full place of allowance when we sleep, when we're not trying to run things. And then our subconscious comes out to play and says, hello, you don't want to, you don't want to address this in the daytime, but we sure enough could address it in your dream time. Okay, here we are. But I also love this too, because the rabbit also represents, uh, represents, uh, an empress kind of energy in another context because rabbits represent fertility. See where we're going with this? And I want to also point out these counter these counter energies, right? This tower here, that this is forward aggression and, and big change. And, and where does anger come from? Anger stems from fear. And the rabbit represents fear. Fear of the unknown and fear of the new. Sometimes, you know, just because you want something and then you have to change to get it, it can be difficult. We can go, oh, okay, maybe not. Are you going to choose what's comfortable, right? Or are you going to take a risk and, and forge into something that you may be uncharted territory, but might well lead you to where you actually want to be, okay? And I do feel like there's going to be a choice coming up for you around comfort, remaining where you are, staying within the status quo. And listen, if you ask me, <laughs> there's no wrong answer. Simply a choice, just the choices that you make. This is just the potential before you, right? It's the potential before you. Yep. So we have the Ace of Wands. Yes, Ace of Wands, but I'm really obsessed. So traditionally speaking, Ace of Wands is a big burst of energy. The wands are about the actions that we take, right? They rule the realm of artistry and passion and desire, right? So this is a big burst of energy, passion and desire and inspiration. But why I especially really like this coming up in the first position for you is because I'm hearing this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine because it is this aspect of lighter inspiration or hope amidst the darkness, which is another symbol for what? The unknown, right? stars in the sky, lighting up the darkness, a source of inspiration. There is this very distinct feeling of forging ahead into the unknown with great hope and faith. And honestly, I feel like for some of you guys, it's going to be like, I allow this. If this is what it's going to take to like get me to, you know, my highest and best life, 
Let's do this, right? I feel like for others of you, it's like, I, I need to, you know, I'm, I'm aware of what's going on. I feel like I'm only ready for like 50% of it. And maybe let's look at the other 50% of it, second or third quarter. <laughs> and you know what? There's, you do you. There's no right or wrong. This is just an available energy to you right now going into January, okay? Mm. I'm getting mother energy again. Um, you know, Empress energy too, because Empress is the mother in the tarot, is also about believing in something before you have physical evidence of it, which is really interesting, right? Not needing to see to believe. I'm so obsessed with this. So nine of pentacles. So isn't this gorge? So <laughs> traditionally speaking, nine of pentacles is about that feeling of independence and success that derives from you doing you, right? This is not necessarily, of course it can often take and often does take teamwork to get where you're going, but this is that key of like, I feel good about what I've done and patting yourself on the back for that. But I also wanna, I'm really, really drawn to the fact that this is a tortoise here. So I do feel like this is speaking of, and again, this is coming up for you. You are an earth sign and then you've got nine of pentacles here, right? I do feel like there is this sense or this aspect of you that is being called to acknowledge your own special skill sets and strengths, right? Now this could be in regards to the work that you do, um, how you live your home life, your relationship to what kind of mother you are, what kind of father you are, what kind of you know person you are. I'm really looking and going, okay, I'm good at this. I feel the best when I do this. How can I make more time for this or how can I monetize this passion of mine, right? But there is this sense, because if you think about it, right? I'm just, I'm really getting this. If you think about it, there's this aspect of, you know, let, let's talk about, you know, parents. Let's talk about a relationship with our mother, right? Just for an example, for you, it could be your dad or your, your grandmother who raised you or whatever have you, right? When I think about the relationship to our mothers, it, it, there's, there is this thing of, you know, independence and separating from that and going like I stand on my own I was gonna say two feet but four feet here in my home is carrying my home on my back there, there is this sense of distinguishing your own identity right um, but I feel like it's for for a lot of you it's gonna be a lot of different things for some of you guys this is stepping outside of a role that you've had for quite some time whether this is a work role and you're going off to work for your own because this is yourself this is also the card of the entrepreneur right? Or others of you, you've been within a certain family dynamic where everybody goes to you to be the caretaker and you're stepping out and going, I don't want to be the mom to everybody anymore. I need to go take care of myself, right? But there is this energy or maybe this, if you are a parent or even if you're not a parent, right? And you just, you work a lot or you're living life where a lot of your friends or loved ones really rely on you. This is going, I'm going to make time for me and focus on what I want my future to look like. And in a way where I'm supporting and thriving within and as a result of my own efforts, right? This is beautiful. I, I do feel like some of you guys um, are, are going to be a bit stretched for time. Um, I feel it. I feel like there's this energy of like, okay, I'll call you back. And then, oh my God, I forgot to call them back because I was, talking, I was working on this business plan or I was working on, you know, thinking and dreaming up the, this, this move I want to make or investing in this or, you know, whatever have you. Um, it, it's all right, but I, I do feel it in the energy. I feel like there's a lot of people that either rely on you or go to you for, for guidance, but it feels so, so auspicious. It feels like on the other side of this wall here is success a lot of abundance, a lot of what you want. And I'm hearing, you know, and, and a good friend of mine says this, it actually equates to shark energy. So part of shark medicine states that abundance is on the other side of fear. And I'm hearing that. Abundance is on the other side of fear, right? But I also feel like for some of you guys, it's, it's also, or rather, that abundance is on the other side of stepping out of your comfort zone or living within the status quo, you can handle a lot more than you think, okay? I mean, and then we have the six of wands, stop, step, and repeat. Does that not look like a white oleander flower? Oh my God, I don't think it is because um, I think it looks a bit different, but it's, it's near enough similar, that's for sure. Okay, let's talk about all the different ways and reasons I'm obsessed with this right now. Six of wands is victory. 
This is recognition for a job well done. This is passion. This is, this is feeling good on every single level and like you have achieved something and seen it through and like, whoa, I'm feeling so good about this. I feel seen. This is my I feel seen key, right? I feel seen for good reason. But I also want to point out too that the B here, B equates to a three of pentacles energy, which is about the work that you particularly are good at, which we were talking about with the nine of pentacles and about the ace of wands, right? So with that three of pentacles energy, again, it's, it's about, oh, that's weird. The, the dragonfly and the bee are giving me similar vibes, right? This really is about going like, okay, uh, this, these are where my strengths are, and I'm going to look to those in order to move me through to where I want to be or, or, or with whom I want to be or whatever that is for you, right? I do feel like for some of you guys, it's going to be a little more subtle, and depending on where you are in the queue or where you are in your process, right? Others of you, this will be um, a little more pronounced, right? But this is beautifully auspicious. This is saying that you're going to be successful and have victory throughout this experience should you choose to walk this road of the unknown, of pushing through the discomfort, right? Of understanding that abundance, you know, lies on the other side of fear. And this is your reward. How stunning and gorge. I'm getting horse energy, actually. Oh, you know what? I think Yeah, that's true. Traditionally, this is someone riding on a horse carrying these, but I I'm really getting horse energy very strongly um horses okay that makes sense actually okay let's talk about horses so horse energy um oftentimes is about they carry a heavy load i'm speaking you know animal medicine wise right horse people they're people with strong horse energy within them or with horse totems um can often uh carry the weight of others around with them Meaning they, they worry a lot for other people, they take in others' pain, they, you know, they come from a place where they care very, very deeply and it can be different, difficult to distinguish their own needs from others. Which is also, <coughs> excuse me, with the sound cue here, which is also another way of saying that, you know, when you carry the burdens of other people, it can be very easy to discount your own needs and not fill your own cup before being there for others, right? And it happens. It's, it's very, very human, but I'm, I'm getting that for some of you guys here, okay? And I'm also going back to the mother gang. Again, it doesn't matter if you're an actual mother. A lot of times mothers will um, discount their own needs in favor of getting the needs of their children met. Right? That, that's like a, you know, we hear about that a lot, right? So just bringing that up there. But I do feel like it's time to really focus on you in January. And yes, still caring and being mindful for other people. But I feel like you're being asked to give some of this time back to you. And I'm getting a message. If you find yourself saying, oh, I'm just, just for an example. If you find yourself saying, okay, tomorrow I'm going to wake up. And let's say you've been wanting to write a book, for example. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to write a thousand words. And then I will get on with the rest of my day. I'm going to go, you know, help them with this. I'm going to help the school where I'm going to do this and whatever else for other people, right? Or go to your, you know, your job. And then the next day comes and suddenly there's obstacles to you writing your a thousand words. It's like, oh, well, I forgot I had to do this. Oh my God, well, let me just put the laundry on first. And while you're putting the laundry on, it's like, oh, well, I should really make the lunch ahead of time though, or I should do this, right? A lot of that is self-created, right? And, and, and there are obstacles that you're putting there for yourself to delay sitting down and actually writing those thousand words. Think about that and notice that when and if that pops up for you, okay? A lot of the times we really do create our own distractions and don't notice it, okay? Nine of Wands here to clarify the Ace of Wands. Okay, so Nine of Wands here. So traditionally, this is the Wounded Warrior key, right? But let's talk about this. I have a actually newfound appreciation and love for the Nine of Wands, okay? I've had a, a deep and personal experience with the Nine of, <laughs> nine of Wands uh, recently. Here's what, I, a lot of the times when this, this comes up in readings, our attention goes to, oh, this is like, 
not feeling great, got a bandage on her head, like looking like she's about to want to sleep for a thousand years, but she can't yet. And looks like she's in some sort of like, you know, weird competition where they force her to like sleep standing up for two days and then climb a mountain, like on the challenge, like whatever this is, right? But the positive side, and I feel like this is, you know, what this is because it is commenting on the Ace of Wands. The positive side of this is, is exactly what I said already, which is you are capable of more than you think. Right? There's a saying, I feel like, it, is it within the Marines? Or I can't remember, like, or the Navy or something. But there's a saying of, um, you know, when you feel like you're ready to give up mentally, emotionally, but actually physically, as the saying goes, you're only 40% done. When your body is like, give up and stop, you're only 40% done. And your body kicks in. The reason that your brain is telling you that is because it's sort of like um, a preservation instinct kicks in and it's like okay I'm going to tell you to stop because we know that we're running you know our energy supply is getting low and we don't want to get to the point where we completely collapse right so you are capable of more than you think and should you hit these you know because this is a lot of energy and this is feeling the energy start to wane okay so that's where we're going with here you are capable of a lot more than you think and at times when you feel like you may not have the time or energy to get your own needs met or do what you want to do or stay up a little you know extra late after you've done the laundry or gotten the work done for the day or done whatever have you and then you're like okay you know what I created distractions for myself this morning or life happened this morning I didn't get those thousand words done and I'm ready to fall asleep right now but you know what I'm gonna get these thousand words done right now because I know that if I do I'm gonna lessen this nine of swords feeling of I failed today I didn't get it done today I let myself down right? It feels really important to commit to yourself in January. It really, really does. Nine of Pentacles. Oh my God. I love it. So we have the Seven of Pentacles to clarify the Nine of Pentacles. So, I mean, are we sensing a theme? This is about patience and waiting. And then we have the Tortoise who's, who's all about moving slow at their own pace, right? So Seven of Pentacles, again, patience, waiting, but is very much about the timing. But do you see how she looks a bit Impatient or dissatisfied, oh, fabulous hair. A little patient or dissatisfied, just like, come on now, grow, why are you taking so long? Right, there's this aspect here. I'm also hearing to be kind with yourself around the timing of things as well. Now there's a difference between, you know, creating distractions and, and going, oh, no, 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 I'm gonna really give this to myself. There's a difference between that and then also expecting it all to come together and not have to, you know, do some trial and error getting to where you're going. Okay, and I do feel like that is a beautiful um, medicinal point here for you. Can you extend to yourself the same compassion and understanding and commitment that you extend to those you love? For some of you, this could be, I, I know it sounds funny, but it's what I'm getting. For some of you guys, this could be, can you show yourself the same love and unconditional love actually and compassion and patience that you show your Labrador? That you show your child? that you show your mom, that you show your best friend, that you show me, mom, papa? Yep, that is the question. Because how you treat yourself, and that's, you know, the, that compassion, that unconditional love that you extend to yourself, should you choose to do so during this time, is going to result in big payoffs and rewards in, in ways that are spanning beyond this month. I will put it that way. Six of Wands, come on. And the congregation said, Amen. Three of Pentacles. Tell me, was I not they? Drawn to the bee. I have shivers all over. I was not drawn to the bee. And I said the bee was about three of Pentacles, which is about the work that you do that you particularly are good at. Stop. Hi. This is exactly what we've been talking about this whole time. Okay. So again, we see an artist here, we see a teacher here, the generational lines here, right? Passing on of wisdom. Also, this is about someone who is, is, has a special skill set, right? But I want to point something out. You know what takes time? Honing your skill set. You know what also takes time? Taking your skill set to the gym. Practice, practice, practice. Time, time, time. Again, this is going to be different for different people, right? But there is this aspect here of, of engaging in work or in pastimes that you feel particularly drawn to. And how you're going to know what those are too is what do you do when the time flies, right? What activity? What, what are you focusing on? This could be even like those of you who are obsessed with researching particular points. Like, okay, so like if you were me, 
Um, I'm always, I'm always, always, always obsessed and reading about, you know, energy, right? Animal medicine, chakras, supernatural happenings, and anything of that realm, astrology, right? So that, that, that's, that has been a big hint for me in my life going, wow, what do I do in my free time that seems to be like creating a pattern here. Well, I'm always looking at this stuff. Why am I, oh, how can I, how can I, how can I extend this into a line of work? How can I extend this to where this is more of my life, right? There's a big clue in that for some of y'all. Maybe some of you guys are always researching makeup and the different kinds of makeup and ways to, to do it and different like humanely sourced makeup companies. And it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, right? Observe yourself within this because I feel like you're being called to really allow yourself the opportunity and chance to spend more time doing what you innately have a passion for. Okay, for some of you guys, it's gonna be about taking the time to really get clear on what that is. And for others of you, you already know, and it's about really committing to the time pushing through the fear or discomfort and knowing that it's that following that feeling and committing to it is going to result in the payoff, okay? Because there is a, a slight whiff of fear of failure here. And I do feel like it can mask itself as other things. It can mask itself as being busy, for example, right? Which one do we want? I'm feeling the goddess. Let's do it. A goddess for my lovely bowls. Yes, Taurus. Going into, oh, that's weird. Bright future and independent. I feel like both of these things were. Reading. I love it. Okay. Woo! Let's see what's going on for Taurus for January with the Oracle. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Give me something good. Okay. So I feel like we're learning a lesson here. <laughs> I'm going to go again, but I do feel like there's a specific lesson in that. Or again, with the patience and understanding the timing of it. Okay, stop. You're not going to believe this. <laughs> Except I'm about to show you, so you will believe it. Mother Mary, Mama, hello and goodbye and hello again. Step and repeat. Stop! Taurus, are you serious? Mother Mary, expect a miracle. Have faith that your prayers have been heard and are being answered. You know, I'm really drawn to something here. The color yellow, because it popped up here too. Um, yellow corresponds to the solar plexus chakra. And that is the chakra from which we experience and view the world. It also deals with, um, you know... The aspect of our self-confidence, self-confidence in general. And I do feel like that's a special note for some of y'all where, you know, maybe spend some extra TLC nurturing your self-confidence. Okay? Guys, Mother Mary, expect a miracle. Have faith that your prayers have been heard and are being answered. Mother Mary, expect a miracle. Believing in something before you can physically see it. Being pregnant with possibility, whether you're male or female, it does not matter at all. Right? But, it, but it's about you know, that, that inherent possibility that is on the other side of fear, delay tactics, and telling yourself that you can't or not being able to imagine it, right? Imagine it first, then fuel it with time, commitment, and intention, and watch and see what happens. Can you imagine a reality where you are doing what you love to do and making money to support yourself by doing it, engaged in work that doesn't feel like work but feels like play? Can you? Can you imagine yourself in a family unit where you feel like you're truly at home and that, that everything is operating in a way where there is unconditional love to be shared and plenty of food on the table all around? Can you imagine this? Because it's right here for you. It's just about getting out of your own way and allowing the universe to bring up to the forefront what needs to be removed. Because it's not about, you know, whenever I do give personal readings, I always say, it's not about why you don't have what you want. I'm here to help you figure out what is keeping you from getting what you want. Not why don't you have it, have it. It's about, because once those blocks are cleared, then you manifest it. As long as it's within your highest and best good and not coming from a place of, you know, no ego or whatever have you, as long as it's based in pure intention and it's really with and for you, right? 
you manifest it. That's what it is. It's about removing those blocks, getting out of your own way, and becoming a vibrational match to what it is that you want. And that's what it is. Okay? Taurus, this was really special. <laughs> it really was. And really, really beautiful. Um, I also just I also just heard that yellow is sometimes a color used to paint a nursery uh, before you know the sex of the baby. That's for somebody. Okay. Um, <laughs> this was your January general reading. I am so excited for you guys. I so hope that this helped and resonated. If so, please do let me know in the comments below. Um, a little like non-secret for me to you. I live for reading your comments. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, and with that being said, Thank y'all so, so much. I'm wishing you a, such a beautiful January ahead. Thank you so, so much for being here. And as always, and most of all, thank you for being you. And be well. Until next time.